the data set comes from uh, SciLife Lab in Stockholm, and they are working in one of the projects on identifying novel therapeutic antibodies. And, and part of the work then related to creating a library of lead candidates against a specific target. And to produce this library, they wanted to establish an, an efficient protocol for transfection and find out the optimal settings for transient gene expression <clears throat> with the effect of pro transfection reagent. And as I said, this was uh, uh, the experiment was run using AMBER 15, and the, the, the two factors that they could change was the amount of uh, uh, DNA that was added and also the ratio between this factor pro transfection reagent and the DNA, uh, the amount of DNA. And the AMBER 15, they were using 12 bioreactors and with only two factors, that means that you have a very good optimization design. I will now go through this data set very much in the same way as I just walked through the mission popcorn. So the first thing that you always have to define is uh, the critical quality attributes, what you can measure, the responses. And the main objective here was to find conditions yielding the highest possible transfection efficiency of this cell type. And SciLife Lab then has this knowledge that this would also encode or correlate with a higher protein titer. So the responses that they measured were the in percentage were transfected cells and viability. And uh, for the, tra the transfected cells response, 80% was seen as a very good result. And here you see the specifications that the transfected cells and viability should both be high ideally 80% and 100% above a certain corresponding minimum setting. The critical <clears throat> process parameters or the factors using mode notation were, as I said on a previous slide, the, um, the amount of DNA added and this ratio. And here you can see how the two factors were changed. Um, DNA amount was changed from 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2 in three steps, and the ratio uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.6, uh, not uh, with equidistant distances between the different settings, but that's another story. Here we see the 12-run worksheet uh, where the experimental name now using the mod uh, Q for AMBER, the original run order is then uh, replaced by <clears throat> the name of each vessel um, in a specific culture station in a randomized fashion. So this is <coughs> culture station one and experiment five. There was an experimental hiccup for them. So experiment number six had to be excluded because of unforeseen experimental problems. So it means that when we evaluate data, we're down to 11 experiments. You will get quality uh, performance indicators of the data and the model, a quarter of bars for transfected cells and a quarter of bar of viability. And what very reliable results were obtained, very good modeling statistics, which means we can trust whatever maps or graphs we are looking at. We can look at the coefficients and they show that there are some nonlinear dependencies for transfected cells. So the factors combine nonlinearly to influence transfected cells, and the factors combine nonlinearly also to estimate viability. It's easier to interpret what we call response contour plots. So to the left, we have the plot for transfected cells, and to the right, we have the plot for viability. And we can see how these two responses are predicted to change when we change the ratio factor pro to DNA, and when we change the DNA amount itself. And here we now see the minimum levels emphasized Remember that we specified earlier on that transfected cells should be above 60 and viability above 80. And it is these, li these lines are then emphasized by a slightly thicker line thickness. So here we have the minimum setting for transfected cells, and here we have the minimum for viability. Highest viability is here in the left-hand part, and highest transfected cells is over here. So they are not, they are conflicting. They are not harmonizing. So it means we must find a compromise where there is a low risk of failing to comply with the specifications of being above 60 and above 80. That means we can look at a sweet spot plot. 
So where is the best operating condition? Which are combination of the two factors encodes uh, uh, the best chance of fulfilling <clears throat> the responses, transfected cells being over 60% and viability being over 80%. So we can make this sweet spot plot which would have been state of the art seven, eight years ago. Or we can use more contemporary tools uh, looking at the risk of failure to comply with response specifications. And the, low, the arrow here shows a, a low risk region where there is a low risk of being below 60 and 80%. The main conclusion was that SciLife Lab was able to set up a robust protocol uh, while minimizing both the plasmid DNA and transfection reagent, and it ultimately led that they could, could lower the experimental cost. So the DOE really helped them to understand limitations of the transfection system and how to push the system towards the lowest use of raw materials. And also, as was accounted uh, and told us, uh, and that is also indicated in our hands or computer exercise, they found AMBER to be a very useful system to work with. 